My next guest has a boundless soaring voice. She is as comfortable with jazz as she is with pop. Her album, My Voice, showcases original work along with a cover of one of my favorite Desert Island songs, Insensitive, written by Jan Arden. She has performed across Canada and the United States and internationally in Budapest, Berlin, and Rotterdam. She writes as a solo artist and has collaborated with Juno award-winning artist Ernesto Cervini, Stephen Tights, and electronic producer Hibernate. So, let's spill the tea with Melissa Lauren. Welcome, Melissa. Hi, thanks for having me, David. You've uh, performed across the pond, Berlin, Rotterdam, uh, places like that. Uh, we would consider that to be a tour. Uh, mm -hmm. outside of Canada. What are the pros and cons of touring like that? Um, well, budget, really. Um, we're so fortunate with with Canada to be supported. I've been so fortunate to have grant um, support from from, um, from Factor, um, which is huge. They, they're amazing. Canada Arts Council, um, both of them have been supportive of my tours in the past. Um, but really, as, as an independent artist, I'm not, it's you going when I went to uh, Europe, it definitely had to be done. I had to go by myself and use um, international artists. I mean, there's no shortage of wonderful musicians out there. Um, so that, that's definitely one of, but that's still a, definitely a, can be a con because it, it all involves a lot of kind of pre-planning and you're working with musicians that are, that you haven't done all the material with. So it's like starting fresh every, every show. That's definitely a con, but it, so it can be seen as a pro too, because there's this like spontaneity and creative process that's good. Um, but yeah, so the so that that's interesting. Um, the the tour management part is definitely hard as well. <laughs> um, I've gotten so much better at it. Uh, just me really paying attention to details, which I just would miss. <laughs> you know, accounting for travel time and and not leaving everything down to just you know you need a bit more of an hour wiggle room. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I've definitely gotten better at that, um, and um, and so that's uh, that's that's my least the, the the actual planning part is my least favorite. But I love my my favorite thing now about going out on tour when we went out with the last um, album um, to the states and parts of Canada was was the run how well it gets if you're going I would go out with the same musicians um by the end of it you're so comfortable with it you know what you're doing you don't have to start at the beginning each time you do a show and that uh, the magic that just happens you just it's it's different every night but but also uh you're more confident with it many artists have ups and downs through their career what's the big challenge that you see for an artist today um well, I mean, the, the pool is so big. Um, there's not, I think, like I mentioned earlier, in terms of, you know, so few of us, um, there's so many wonderful artists. There's not everyone is able to connect with management. There, I know there's pros and cons to the management side too, but but just kind of to kind of go off of what I was saying earlier, um, artists ends up having to, blindly kind of do a lot of the stuff that you have to have a million different jobs you have to know how to do publicity you have to know how to do um economics you have to know how to do time management um uh, put yourself on a schedule you have to learn how to treat it like a job um i mean i guess it looks good on a resume really because you have all the skills but it but that that that's a huge challenge i think learning how to navigate social media so many people spend years on their craft and they develop a wonderful craft but then then it's like whoa but i don't i have no music i've put out there yet nobody knows how to find me and i'm not getting any gigs and then it's then they have to start doing all the extra stuff so that that's hard learning how to 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 do many different different skills related to the industry it's it's a different world than than it was you know even 20 30 years ago when mm -hmm. there was um, different jobs that they were managers they were the labels there were the studios the the songwriters and then there were singers you know <laughs> and, i mean you know thinking back like the motown days and then earlier and and you know and but yeah so that that's that's one big challenge i think for sure so around your house nathan is a artist in his own right. You are an amazing artist. Is there ever competition in the house? Uh, 
you got more plays. I got more plays. I did this. I can sing better than you. Is there any, <laughs> is, there any is there any competition? No, not for that. Strangely enough, um, I unless it's very, very subconscious. <laughs> um, you know, wait a minute. How did you get like that funding and I didn't this? Hmm, wait a minute. That festival canceled on me and I didn't on you. You know, I, I maybe there's some little hints of sub subconscious stuff that happens, but um, I don't. In terms of our musical accomplishments, no. What we do have competition over is the oral space in the house <laughs> um so he um because he's he, he's definitely like he's a full-time musician through and through he does that he's a side guy he plays with all different musicians he's a studio guy so he gets hired for that he has to record at home for things he teaches you know he's got students in, in the house all the time he's practicing all the time he just picked up a banjo gig so he's playing the banjo all the time so you know there's definitely that that's what we end up kind of, <laughs> um, that's where the, well, wait a minute, why do you get the, the space right now <laughs> to, to fill up with sound? <laughs> I think that's more um, where we, we get into competitions. Well, you, you know, so. Time, time and space competition. Time and space, which I guess <laughs> is like my husband and wife, you know. <laughs> Let's get into one of the songs that Melissa wrote. This song is from the 2022 album, My Voice. And as M Melissa admits, some of the songs from the playlist were a result of, I'll call it, active discussions with her husband through COVID. So let's take a listen to singer-songwriter Melissa Lord and the title track from her latest work, My Voice. My voice is a fire. My voice has wings. My voice is a crier, a climber, a beautiful thing. We'll do some skyscraping, past guards in wide, then down to the other gates for a toss up and a fight. Can you feel it moving? Past the guards in ruins, he can change the seven wonders so they match your side. Moves to keep you crying. Rock and roll. My voice can take us where we've never been before. As soft as a petal when nature stirs. As fierce as a lion, if you misread my purse. Got it, show. 
That was singer-songwriter Melissa Lauren with the title track from her latest work, My Voice. Melissa, that uh, song, can it, it can take on so many different meanings. And as one artist said to me, I, I love it when people have different interpretations. Number one, I'm just happy they're listening to the lyrics, first of all. And then number two, that they, they take that and they kind of own that themselves and they put their own, um, they put their own feeling into it. They put their own version on the lyrics. What was your inspiration for that song when you were writing it? Um, so it, it's, it kind of encompasses the whole theme of the album. Um, and the album took on the theme of the, the voice, the, the, as simple as that, but as superly not simple as that, uh, the human voice, um, what it can do, its capabilities. Uh, the, we were at a time coming out of or in, in, in certain events were being illuminated in the world where there was huge gaps in the inequity of how different voices were being heard and how as human beings we have to, when we have the chance and the privilege, help illuminate other people's voices. Be silent when you need to be silent because there's power in silence. Mm -hmm. um, and so the album kind of took on the, the main theme of that, um, the barriers that get between the voice and getting through to other people, um, the barriers between your own inner voice and how people struggle with that um and the power of many voices um that's why we, we chose a lot of arranging to kind of um you know the the live show had the big choir with and i choir direct so i love bringing voices together and that's a little big part of my live performance as well um so this so yeah the, the album had songs that had to do with one song was uh you know a woman who um murders her poisons her husband because a bird on her shoulder tells her to um and kind of that that we played a lot with that kind of inner voice what what you can what what happens when you listen to the inner voice as what it can show up as and then you know there's a song on the album where there's two people that are jailbirds so to speak that that get together for one last dance because they can't really talk to each other you know and then um or two people being in the same car but not hearing each other. So anyway, so that's kind of the whole theme of the album. And this song in particular, I wanted to write something that my that um, I could show my daughter and that could I wanted it to be perspective what 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 a young voice could be the power of it. You know, my voice is a fire. My voice has wings. I want her to know that her voice can reach places and that um, all of her voices can reach places. It's just a matter of figuring out well, the language, <laughs> um, metaphorically speaking, and 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 the best way to to get to get the voice heard. Um, so that's kind of where the the the, the song was, uh, the inspire for the inspiration for this specific song, and we featured her in the video, which was super cute too. <laughs> um, yeah, and just just what the human voice can be. It could be fierce. It could be loving. It could it could cross mountains. It could be quiet. It could be love. You know. So now we come to the part of the show where we do the lightning round rapid fire questions. Here's what I need from you. I need one word answers to these questions. Okay. Brace yourself. Take a deep breath. Here we go. What's your favorite food? Seafood? <laughs> What's your favorite dish to cook? Oh my God, I'm so bad at this. I hate <laughs> salmon. Uh, best vacation destination ever. Dominican Republic. A destination that is still on your bucket list. Um, Brazil. One word that describes you best. Neurotic. One word that your husband would use to describe you best. Complicated. Favorite movie. Back to the Future. Favorite Desert Island song that's not one of yours and not one of Nathan's. Elvis Presley, I can't help falling in love with you. What's your guilty pleasure? Louis. <laughs> um, potato chips and Louise Penny novels. <laughs> Who's your hero? My dad and mom. What's Nathan's birthday? October 30th, 1980. What's your anniversary date? August the 19th. What's the pet name you have for Nathan? Mr. I think. Mr. 
Melissa, what's coming up for you in the future? What gigs have you got coming up? New releases, new songs, new projects, tours, concerts. Give us an update. February 1st, I'll be at Upstairs Jazz Bar and Grill in Montreal, which is Thursday. Um, and then we're doing a show in Brighton with Side Door Access. I'm on Ottawa on the February the 4th, which is a Sunday, at Live on Elgin. I've just started collaborating with a singer named Christopher Plock. And we're do we've been doing um a Peggy Lee Frank Sinatra tribute show. So we've got a Valentine's Day one on well, February 15th at the Jazz Bistro in Toronto with a wonderful band. And then upcoming in terms of recording, I'm I'm slowly putting together new songs for a new project. Um, I've been working, like I mentioned, in the field of addictions and mental health. And uh the first song that we've that we'll be recording is with um, a brilliant clinician and therapist and writer and and wrote a song called um old friend uh that that we are going to record at the end of the month uh it takes the perspective of what would if you if your addiction came back as uh, an old friend um and the funds from the band camp proceeds will go towards my um my work renaissance um and uh, foundation so that's that's something to to look out for you can follow me on all the socials and uh, all that information is there melissa lauren three on Instagram and, and TikTok and all those things. And then my website is melissalornmusic.ca. We've been in conversation with Melissa Lauren. Melissa, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me.